a charge to
that he took the initiative to, to seek us out and give us an opportunity to be children of God by faith. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord again. And I greet each of you in the name of our Christ. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we ask for forgiveness for our many sins. And we acknowledge the fact that we have so much to be thankful for that you have given us so much that we do not deserve. We thank you for the simple things that we often take for granted, the food and shelter, transportation, reasonable portions of health and strength. And we thank you for family, we thank you for uh, worship. We thank you particularly for salvation and we thank you for your revealing power of the Holy Spirit that uh, made us know that you're God and that you always has been and always shall be self-derived, self-sustained, yet demonstrated your uh, awesome love for your creation and humankind in particular, and that you had a plan for salvation even before we fell. Bless this church, bless the church at large, promote healing in our bodies, minds, and souls, bring us closer and closer together each day in you enable us to understand and even when we do not understand to be obedient to your word to study to strive to be real in Jesus' name we pray amen i want to call your attention today to the book of isaiah sometimes called the Old Testament Gospel because, because it has so much prophecy uh, even restated in the New Testament about Jesus the Christ. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 18 through 31 is our text today. Uh, three main points that we want to emphasize. The first one would be in Judah and Jerusalem. Judah and Jerusalem. And point number two, call to repentance. And point number three, promised deliverance. Promised deliverance. Our subject today is the consequences of forsaking the Lord. The consequences of forsaking the Lord. From the New King James Version, I want to read uh, a few verses beginning at verse 18. Come now, and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. 
verses 18 through 20 from the first chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah uh, chapter 1, I would like to take a look at a few verses uh, early in the chapter to bring us up to where our text begins today in verse 18. Reflecting back on the nation of Judah, after Saul, David, and Solomon Israel was divided around 917 BC. Up until the time of Isaiah, the kingdom of Israel had some 18 kings, all bad, rebellious against the Lord. The kingdom of Judah had some 11 kings before Isaiah's ministry some good and some bad. Ten tribes made up the northern tribe of Israel. Judah was made up of Judah and Benjamin that made the two tribes in the south uh, ultimately called Judah, Israel and Judah. God called heaven and earth as witnesses against Judah. The leaders and people had resisted the Lord. God now stated his case against them. He said, I have nursed and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. Parents can understand uh, the difficulty in raising children, the uh, trouble, if you will, that one must go through, uh, the uh, hard work, uh, the prayer, uh, the expense uh, of raising children. And then, of course, it hurts when they rebel against the parents. So you can understand from a spiritual standpoint, the Lord said, I have nursed and brought up children and they have rebelled against me. In other words, he is speaking as the God, the creator, creating us, but didn't leave us alone, nursed us, protected us, revealed himself unto Israel and Judah that we're talking about right now. But they have rebelled against me. He speaks in the first chapter there. He says the ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not consider or Israel does not know. Israel does not even realize and consider its owner and who takes care or who has taken care of them. The donkey, a beast of burden, uh, and also the ox and these animals are uh, sometimes particularly the donkey uh, thought of of being stupid. And the ox 
just a beast of burden to plow or to work or to carry uh, certain vessels or instruments. But God is saying even these animals that do not have the sense of reasoning, even these animals that I have provided for or their owners have provided for, recognize their owners and respect their owners and have not rebelled against them. But my people, humankind, the pinnacle of my creation, my chosen ones, have rebelled against me. He said, alas, sinful nature, laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, and they have provoked the Lord to anger. Verse 9 in chapter 1 of Isaiah states, unless the Lord of hosts had left us a small remnant we would have become like Sodom. We would have been made like Gomorrah. God warned them, Judah in particular, and told them to look at what had happened uh, to the northern tribe. In 722 BC, the Assyrians took the northern tribe into bondage. But after seeing this happen to the northern tribe, their brothers and sisters, Judah continued in their rebellious and their sinful ways, disrespecting the Lord. Until finally, in 586, the Babylonians would take them into bondage. The Lord says in verse 17 to Judah, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Believe it or not, the oppressors were basically the leaders in the tribe of Judah that were supposed to be looking out for the people, particularly the father, fatherless and the widow and the orphans, but they only looked out for themselves. Kind of like the uh, book of Ezekiel talks about the shepherds that drank water from a trough like a cow and then after they had their bellies full of water kick it over so that nobody else could get it. Selfishness was the way that Judah was acting. The Lord says in our text today Verse 18, come now and let us reason together. The almighty God, the sovereign God, who doesn't owe us anything, who didn't owe Israel or Judah anything, but he's willing to reason with them. He's speaking to them as if he's ready to go into a legal court. He says, come let us reason together. Let us talk. Let us pray and settle this matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. As though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. In other words, the uh, scarlet and the crimson was like a piece of cloth that had been dyed uh, and it was uh, like a stain that you couldn't get out. Sin is like a stain that cannot be removed, particularly by us. It can only be removed through repentance and our appealing to the Almighty God. He is the only one that can forgive sin like that stained cloth of scarlet, like that stained cloth of crimson. You see, they shall be as wool. They, they were deeply stained spiritually. God offers a cure. He offers a cleansing. He didn't just indict them. 
he offered them a cure. He said, come let us reason together. But verse 19, extremely important. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That reminds me in the New Testament, Jesus spoke to Israel, talked about the way that a chicken uh, put the brood on the, its wings. And he says he wanted to do that for Israel. He said, but you weren't willing. Here in the Old Testament, he says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Judah was guilty of murder, verse 21. They were guilty of robbery. They were guilty of bribery. They were guilty of exploiting the helpless, verses 22 and 23. They were guilty. They were guilty of worship of heathen gods, idols, instead of worshiping the one and only God who considered his relationship with them as a marriage. He compares the action of the people as a harlot, as a whore. In other words, he's saying, my relationship with you as a marriage, but you are now yielding yourself to other gods. When you know that thou shalt not worship other gods, you should have no other gods before me. The rulers put on a religious facade to cover up their crimes, and the people accepted it. God was willing to offer them salvation, verse 25 through 31, to purge them of their impurities. He speaks about the process of melting metal to get rid of the dross or the impurities. He's willing to spiritually do that for Judah. Do you not know he's willing to do that for us today? God hated their empty religious ceremonies. He still hates empty religious ceremony. Church attendance and a few dollars in the offering does not please God. He wants, he demands. Although he gives us free will, he wants changed hearts. He wants humility, surrender to God, forsaken sin, reformed lives. God offers a cure. He said, wash yourselves, make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Those leaders that are oppressing you and you're putting up with it, rebuke them. Plead for the widow. True reason with a spirit of adoration is what God wants. Submission toward him. And he's still that same unchanging but God. Cleansing comes because Jesus took upon himself our stain of sin. As we look at this Old Testament passage, we cannot forget, we cannot overlook the many passages in there where he talks about bringing forth a remnant out of Babylon. The immediate application of that would have been when he allowed Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, and Ezra to lead the children out of Babylon and to build a wall and set up worship in Jerusalem again. All of that pointed toward the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming, cleansing even though in the Old Testament, those that had faith 
in the coming of Christ was saved by imputed righteousness, but ultimately sin is cleansed and we are forgiven and we are saved because of the blood of Jesus Christ, the Messiah that they were looking for. There is now hope for the hopeless. Only the work of Jesus can cleanse us. Come now. Get reconciled. Come now. Repent. Come now. This is your hour. Come now. This is your day. Come now. Reason, the one and only awesome, merciful God. Come now and receive him as Lord and Savior. Reflect on what the Lord said to Israel and Judah in particular. Reflect on him saying how the faithful city, which was Jerusalem, had become a harlot. It was full of justice, righteousness, lodged in it previously, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross, your wine mixed with water, your princes are rebellious and companion of thieves. Everyone loves bribes. Do you not know that we live in a country now where people are taking bribes and companion of thieves, yet claim they love the Lord and follow after rewards? They do not defend the fatherless, fatherless nor the cause of the widow that come before them. Come now. Let us reason together. Come now and recognize as Philippians chapter 2 records that Jesus emptied himself, took on the likeness of sinful flesh, took on chosen weaknesses. Think about what the Lord said in Isaiah, I will turn my hand against you and thoroughly purge away your dross and take away all your alloy. I will restore your judges as at first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterwards, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. And the Lord will in the end times fix it so as he bring forth the new covenant that came forth in Jesus. Zion will be redeemed with justice and her penance with righteousness. Destruction of transgressors and of sinners shall be together and those who forsake the Lord shall be consumed. But it does not have to be that way does not have to be that way because Jesus died at Calvary. And some of us are acting as if he's still dead. Yes, he died. Yes, he suffered. Yes, he was beaten. But he wasn't really killed because he said, I will lay down my life and I'll take it up again. Aren't you glad that he took it up again? Aren't you glad that on the third day morning he got up with all power and authority? Aren't you glad that one day he's coming back for the church? And as 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says, the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us that are alive will be caught up to meet him in the air. Aren't you glad that one day he will set up a kingdom in the millennium? A child will be able to play over the hole of a cobra and there will be peace in the valley. Oh, praise his holy name. And then, oh God, we look forward today, particularly in the eternal state. I know that absent from the body is present to be with the Lord, but I know that eventually there will be a resurrection. And after he has defeated Satan, and all of his imps, after he has done all of this, will be able to live in a city 
built on 12 foundations to live in a city and he will claim his bride which is the church there will be a new Jerusalem that will be a new earth and there won't be no more sin no more crying all the tears will be wiped away oh praise his holy name and but you know what I'm glad about? One day they will crown him Lord of Lord and King of Kings, but they won't do it until I get there. Oh yes, I hear people saying, I wanna see my mother, I wanna see my father, I wanna see all of those, but most of all, I wanna see Jesus. I shall see Jesus. Will you be there? I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. The door of the church is open by letter of Christian experience or candidates for baptism. Or candidates for baptism by letter of Christian experience. Won't you come now and receive the Lord as your Savior? Won't you come acknowledging Him, the one and only true God? The door of the church is open. Jesus is that door, and He's waiting to receive those that will be obedient and recognize Him as the Lord and Savior. Won't you bless Him now? Won't you receive Him? Thank you so much for tuning in today, Mount Olive. And we also want to acknowledge and thank our special guests, our visitors, for tuning in today and being a part of our church services. We invite you to be a part of our church services every week. Our prayer is that you heard something that blessed you and that would encourage you to deepen your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mount Olive, we have already received our directives from our pastor concerning our tithes and offerings. And our prayer is that each one of us will be obedient. But we would also like to extend the invitation to our visitors to give. We promise you if God has placed on your heart to give into this ministry, plant a financial seed, you would be planting a seed in good ground. Log on to our website where you'll have instructions on giving. You can submit a special prayer request or if you would like to be a part of our church family, we welcome you. We want to connect with you. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Frank Jenkins Sr. and the entire Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church family, thank you and may God bless you.